Welcome to the cheapest way to get around Japan, hitchhiking. While hitchhiking the whole country from Kagoshima to Hokkaido, I stopped halfway to make a quick guide with tips on how to hack the system. All this adventure can be yours if you put away your Japan Rail Pass and take out your phrase book. Adventure awaits the adventurous. Hello everybody, I thought I'd take a break out of my very busy highway schedule to give you a little guide on how to hitchhike in Japan. So I've been doing this for about 15 years now, and I absolutely love it. The reason why I do it is not because I don't have any money. But that's exactly why I started hitchhiking back in 2003, when I traveled the road from Wakanai to Kagoshima, the opposite way. I wanted to see the whole country without draining my bank account. And during the one month trip, 20 people stopped taking me the length of the country. I spent only $150 for four weeks, staying in towns off the beaten path, discovering new places not in any guidebook. But I digress. It's because I want some adventure. I hitchhike because I want to meet people. And Japan is a very safe country um, in the sense that people who pick you up are doing so because they want to help you. They want to meet you. They're curious about what you're doing and why. When you hitchhike, don't get in a car if you don't feel comfortable with the person who's picking you up. Uh, nine. Now, 10 times out of 10, I can't say that, Nine, 99 out of 100 times, the person picking you up, you're gonna say yes to because they're a very kind-hearted person. Don't go by the way people look, uh, go by the way people act. One instance was a man who saw me holding my sign at a service area and offered me a ride. In the first 10 seconds, I felt comfortable. He told me he was traveling to Toyama alone and could use the company, and I was happy for the ride. Don't bring a lot of luggage. Don't do what I did. I have in here lots of cables, tents, batteries, a tent, batteries, stuff for video, video equipment. Very little of it is clothing. This is what I'll be wearing for the entire month and I'm able to do laundry because there's laundry mats in Japan just about everywhere. Every two or three days I, I do the wash. And there's baths, so I'm, I'm always pretty clean, which isn't a problem. But it's okay to look scruffy, which is number three. Don't look like a million bucks. No one's gonna pick up someone in a business suit, right? Like, why, why aren't you taking your private jet? So, yeah, dress down a little bit, and uh, but stay neat. Equipment, tent, because if no one picks you up, you need a place to stay. Having a tent is t extremely invaluable. I've used it four times on this trip already. So where do you sleep when you're traveling on the road like this? This is not camping. Uh, not really. When you say camping in Japanese, people think of recreational camping with barbecues cooking on fire, and friends and families making a lot of noise. In those cases, you need a recreational camping area. If you're just pitching a tent and crashing for the night, a local park or public area will do. The unwritten rule is to set up late, after dark, and get up early and leave when the sun comes up. Make sure the area is clean and don't disturb the neighborhood. If the area is private property like farms, ask in advance. If you're not sure, find another place. The local tourist office and train stations can sometimes point you in the right direction. Uh, so very, very important to have. Cardboard, you need to be able to communicate with people. So having cardboard is the way I communicate to let people know where I'm going. This is Maizuru, which is the next destination or near the next station, the next destination where I wanna go. You need to have markers. Have more than one, have maybe two or three handy. Keeping it nice and neat, that's a sort of a Japanese trait. You wanna have it looking pretty good. Um, I have a lot of um, duct tape, which I use not just for um, making it more visible, the signs, but also for taping them back to keep them uh, from flapping around in the wind. There'll be times when the wind is very, very uh, heavy and, and having the duct, the duct tape helps a lot. It also helps in case there's a hole in your tent or other reasons that you might need it, like taping a camera to a wall or something like that. Uh, communication, I told you about the cardboard. It also helps to be able to speak some Japanese. You have to be able to write where you want to go. The reason why I don't write it in, in Romaji is Japanese eyes, um, although traffic signs have both Japanese kanji and uh, Romaji English letters, Japanese eyes see 
this. They don't see the English letters. Foreign tourists see the English letters first, not the Japanese characters. You're getting picked up by someone who's Japanese. You want to write in their language. So that's an essential key. Um, you can do that with Google Translate app, which is free, or just a map and copy down what you see. Uh, just be very careful in the way you write it because the strokes sort of matter in being understood. You want to have a smile, you want to have a good attitude, you want to be able to speak Japanese a little bit, have a phrase book or a guide where you can communicate with the person who picks you up. They'll probably be able to speak a little bit of English because they're picking up a foreigner, but you want to be able to speak enough Japanese to carry a fun conversation if you can. But again, the reason why I'm hitchhiking purely is for the adventure, for the fun of it and to meet people. Hitchhiking is sort of a science. You have to think about where the people on that road are going to go to and the highest percentage of them taking you to that spot. And maybe you got to hitchhike twice to get to the, to the place that you want to go. So you have to kind of figure out what are the number plates, the license plates going in your direction? What do they say? Where are they all heading? What's the traffic? What are the traffic patterns? This spot was a little outside Kagoshima on the way to the expressway towards Kumamoto. Traffic was heavy, but it was hard to find a place for a ride to safely stop and pick me up. Bus lanes can work when the roads aren't super busy. On average, it took 20 to 45 minutes for a ride to stop. The fastest was 45 seconds, and the longest was over four hours. My ride to Kumamoto initially passed me, then went around the block to pick me up. 25% of my rides went out of their way to pick me up just like this. Just not my day. Asahikawa or bust. In Sapporo, I started early at the entrance of the Hokkaido Expressway. My first ride only took me about 30 kilometers to the town of Iwami. I almost never turn down a ride if I feel comfortable with the driver. You just don't know when the next ride will stop. In Iwami at the toll gate, the traffic was very light, and after an hour, the road service kicked me down to the low road. It's prohibited to hitchhike on the highway unless you're dropped off there. One guy did stop, but I had too many bags and his back seat was full. Sometimes that's the way it goes. I wasn't sure of the roads in Iwami. Big intersections have a lot of traffic, but a kind woman on foot told me to go further down the road. About 200 meters away was a place where a car could pull in safely to pick me up but I didn't realize that most people on this road were not going to Asahikawa. After over an hour here, a lady in a pink car with a sleeping baby in the back picked me up and drove me three kilometers down the road to the main free road to Asahikawa. She had passed me once already and came back because she felt like I'd be there for hours. And this is where I should have been. Route 12 is the highway, not the highway, but it's the uh, low way, it's the other way to go to Asahikawa, which is 94 kilometers on this road. So at least now I'm, I'm in the right direction. I hope. A hard day, but if you keep at it and stay positive, good things happen and sometimes the way to your destination finds you. I made it to Asahikawa by sunset, but it took more than four hours to get a ride. The kind driver who picked me up went past his destination to make sure I got to Asahikawa okay. Finding the right place to hitchhike from isn't always easy. Take this map of Toyama, for instance. In the morning, I took a bus from the train station to the highway interchange. I got cardboard from a nearby 7-Eleven and hitched by the entrance. It took 45 minutes for someone to stop. He's stopping. Good news, he stopped. He pulled into the parking lot and I got to my destination by the end of the day. I have 10 rules that I follow when I'm hitchhiking. Never hitchhike at night. When the headlights start coming on, I know it's time to stop. Always carry enough cash for the next 48 hours. Away from cities, there aren't always ATMs available when you want one. Always smile and be respectful, even when you think no one is watching you. Have a plan B. If you're waiting a long time at a spot, maybe consider changing to a closer destination or changing your hitchhiking spot. Carry an extra piece of cardboard whenever possible. I usually put a small backup piece inside my sign. Always have at least three black markers. Always carry and exchange business cards. 
If you forget something, the ride can always contact you, or you can send a postcard or gift later to say thank you. When you exchange cards, you're no longer a complete stranger. Never sleep in a car when driving. Always know your destination, hotel, station, the address. Without question, always stay positive even when things go wrong. I'm out here, I'm working hard, I'm trying to get a ride, and my reward is being picked up. And to me, that is the ultimate in the hitchhiking world. Getting the pickup and the ride, that's your reward for standing out here and working hard uh, and making new friends. There's no better feeling than when somebody stops for you. There's a warmth that comes when strangers show kindness to one another. And more than the fact that the ride is free, it's a chance to really get to learn about Japan from someone who cared enough to stop. Good luck with your trip, and see you out there on the road. Next time, is this the world's most beautiful Starbucks? A lot of reviews say so. I stopped by for a visit to see how it stacks up to other shops around Japan. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button and watch another one of Only in Japan's shows.